Hi, Mark Randa here from Applied Design Intelligence. This video will show how it is possible to automate both grain and face direction based on your company's exact requirements. The features described in this video rely on you owning router sim nesting software. Other output solutions will be explored soon. On screen, you can see a cabinet partition that I'm using as an example but you can add one or both of the controls to any or all of the parts in a configurator. When I adjust the face direction, you can see an arrow that flips direction to denote which face router sim should use as the up face. The arrows used for this are special sketch blocks that router sim looks at to override its automatic determination of up, which is generally the side with the most machining. When I adjust the grain direction, I can override the normally automatic grain definition, which would be horizontal as shown, and switch it to a vertical orientation, which may be needed on drawers and toe kicks or what have you. These arrows do not have to be visible to work. If you have lots of them in a configurator, you can make a global switch that will turn them on and off so that you can do a quick and easy check when needed. In normal operation, you would not use this little form here to configure your parts at the part level. They would be configured at the assembly level with either manual controls like these or by adding iLogic. This is the main form for the assembly, and on a tab over here on the right, I have created the same controls. I'll turn off the visibility of the drawers to get a better view. As you can see, I can control the orientation using the parts form, but this is never done in practice. The part form was made just to test the part during construction. On the main form, I have created an orientation override option that will allow me to control the partition manually or automatically. With the checkbox unchecked, the orientation of both the grain and face are controlled by an iLogic rule that looks for specified conditions that will automatically change the orientations. For this example, I made a rule that changes the orientation of both the grain and face depending on the width. This would never be used in practice, it is just easy to demonstrate. I'll switch to the Size and Style tab and change the width to 24 inches. The code that changes the orientation will fire at 24 inches or below. I press Apply and the Sketchblock controls are adjusted accordingly. Now I'll change the width to 36 inches and the controls automatically adjust again. Now we'll switch back to the Orientation tab and try to manually change the orientation. As you can see, it cannot be done. I'll choose the Orientation Override option, then try again, and as you can see, I am able to switch the orientation. Now we'll go back to the Size and Style tab and change the size again to 24 inches, then press Apply. As you can see, the automated orientation controls will not run while I have the Orientation Override checkbox checked. You may not have any parts that need face or grain control beyond what is achieved automatically with router sim, but manual control or full automation of grain direction and or face direction is pretty easily achieved. That's all for today's video. Make sure to visit Applied Design Intelligence blog where we have more information on inventor configurator capabilities. Again, I am Mark Randa from ADI and thanks for watching.